Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Vitra Health, for their support of Braintree Today and BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Pressure is growing on President Joe Biden to extend the deadline for the evacuation operation in Afghanistan, as thousands of desperate Afghans and foreigners are crowding into Kabul's airport in hopes of fleeing Taliban rulers. Biden warned that the evacuation was going to be hard and painful and that a lot could still go wrong. That concern was highlighted on Monday morning when a firefight erupted at the airport between Afghan guards and un an unidentified gunmen. German and U.S. forces were also involved, according to the Germany military. Britain and France are calling for the deadline to be eased, but a Taliban official said foreign forces had not sought an extension and it would not be granted if they had. Local Taliban militants speaking to a large crowd in Kabul on Monday urged Afghans to remain in the country. Back to our COVID updates, on Monday, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted full approval to the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for people aged 16 and older. This is the first coronavirus vaccine to be fully approved by the FDA and is expected to create room for more vaccine mandates. The Pfizer vaccine has been authorized for emergency use since mid-December and continues to be available under emergency use authorization for individuals 12 to 15 years old and for the administering of a third dose for immunocompromised people. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy said a small number of people have been waiting for full approval before getting their shot. He believes this may convince some to go out and get vaccinated. Out of more than 170 million people in the United States fully vaccinated against COVID-19, more than 92 million have received, received the pfizer BioNTech vaccine. On Tuesday, the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education approved a mask mandate for all public school students and staff. Education Commissioner Jeffrey Riley set the mask mandate on Friday and waited for approval from the board. Riley wants the mandate in place through October 1st to ensure schools fully reopen safely and to give students and educators more time to get vaccinated. In a statement, Riley said, quote, With cases rising, this mask mandate will provide one more measure to support the health and safety of our students and staff this fall. End quote. After October 1st, public, middle, and high schools can make the decision to lift the mask mandate for vaccinated students and staff. This is only relevant if the school meets a certain vaccination rate where at least 80% of students and staff in a school building are vaccinated. Unvaccinated students and staff would still be required to wear a mask and the mandate would then only apply indoors and to children five and older. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends as cases continue to grow. Over the weekend, over 138,000 molecular tests were conducted and 3,335 new positive cases were reported from these tests. This averages at 1,112 positive cases per day over the Friday through Sunday testing period. Currently, 530 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 139 are in the ICU. Four new deaths were also reported. The town of Braintree will also continue to monitor COVID data from the state since our, since our last update, Braintree Town Hall has reported 17 new positive cases. The Town Hall website currently shows a total of 4,776 positive cases. There have, now, there have not been any new fatalities reported in about eight months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 136. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Braintree Today is brought to you with the support of Vitra Health in Braintree. Vitra Health is a home health care company with a goal of helping families stay together. They are dedicated to providing service and support backed by over 40 years of experience. To learn more, please visit www.vitrahealth.com. Welcome back. On Saturday, 62-year-old Braintree resident Paul Veneto began his 220-mile long journey from Boston Logan Airport's 9-11 memorial to the site of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Veneto started Polly's push to call attention to the courage of the flight attendants on the four flights involved in the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and to remember his fellow flight attendants on United Flight 175. 
Veneto plans to push the airline drink cart between 10 and 20 miles per day to hopefully make it to ground zero on September 11th. Polly's push will benefit the 9-11 crew members, families, registered nonprofit organizations, and Power Forward 25, a Marshfield-based nonprofit founded by two-time Stanley Cup champion Kevin Stevens to assist those like himself who are dealing with addiction. Donations can be made via the website at pollyspush.com. A Braintree woman, Emily Horde, is suing Walmart after she says she was severely injured when the top of a travel mug exploded into her face. Horde bought a 24-ounce Ozark Trail vacuum-insulated stainless steel bottle, a Walmart brand from the store in Quincy. According to the lawsuit, she filled it with the Arizona brand mango juice, Much Mango. Ten days later, she went to her backpack and found the steel bottle was still in there. She tried to remove the top by unscrewing the cap, but was at first unable. The lawsuit stated, quote, As she continued her effort to remove the subject bottle top, the top suddenly and without warning ejected with enormous force from the subject bottle, striking her below her chin and lower jaw with extreme velocity, causing massive damage to her jaw and face, end quote. Horde started bleeding from her chin, lower jaw, and mouth and was taken to Boston Medical Center to be treated. According to University of Massachusetts Amherst chemistry professor Justin Furman, the exploding bottle phenomenon, called a bottle bomb, is common in the beer brewing world, a result of too much pressure in a single bottle. The bottle is still available for sale on Walmart's website. Last week, the Braintree Rotary Club dedicated a bench in the Memorial Garden outside of Thayer Public Library to Nelson Chin, Braintree's former recreation director. Chin, a longtime volunteer in youth, spo youth sports programs, died in December from COVID-19 at the age of 66. Members of the Braintree Rotary Club remember Nelson Chin both for his friendship and for his service to the community. Chin was, a, was presented posthumously with a Paul Harris Fellowship, known as the Rotary's highest honor. The club also donated $5,000 to sponsor the Nelson Chin Memorial Golf Tournament, which will be held on October 15th at the Braintree Municipal Golf Course. The tournament will raise money for the Nelson Chin Memorial Fund, which will support scholarships and other local charities. Getting rid of household hazardous waste is a serious environmental problem. That's why the town of Braintree is organizing a household hazardous waste event to provide access to environmentally approved disposal disposal for its residents. The event will be held on Saturday, September 25th at 9 a.m. to noon at 90 Pond Street. Most household, lawn, garden, automobile, and boat chemicals are accepted. It will be $5 for every 5 gallons or 5 pounds of material. This includes oil paint, but not latex paint. Other items include solvents, fertilizers, hobby supplies, poisons, oils, marine chemicals, cleaning fluids, and pool chemicals. If you'd like more information, you can call the recycling office at 781-794-8088 or visit www.braintreema.gov slash recycling to see the household hazardous waste flyer. Also, the health department will be on hand to take unneeded prescriptions and needles and syringes. For additional information on that, you may call the health department at 781-794-8090. Braintree Mayor Charles Kokoris and Interim School Superintendent Jim Lee have partnered with Brewster Ambulance to hold a COVID-19 vaccine clinic for anyone 12 years and older. The clinic will be held at Braintree High School in the gymnasium from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday, August 28th. Second doses of the Pfizer vaccine will then be administered on Saturday, September 18th. Participants are required to attend both clinic dates in order to be fully vaccinated. Reservations are not required, but town officials are asking residents who want the vaccine to fill out paperwork that can be downloaded on the town hall website at braintreema.gov. Copies of the forms are also available at the mayor's office and school administration building. During the month of August, the Braintree Partnership is conducting a brief survey for residents 12 years of age and older as a way to gain a better understanding of the residents' needs and knowledge of available resources. The Braintree Partnership is a community prevention coalition that works to support the behavioral health needs of Braintree residents. The survey, which takes approximately 10 minutes to complete, is voluntary and responses are anonymous. 
Feedback from the survey will assist the Braintree Partnership in determining how to best promote, share, and advocate for the most valued and appropriate community resources. Upon completion of the survey, you will have an opportunity to enter a drawing to win one of two $50 Amazon gift cards or one of 10 $10 Amazon gift cards. You can find the survey on the Town Hall's website at BraintreeMA.gov. The Norfolk County Sheriff's Office is hosting a back-to-school family movie night for families on August 26 at the department's Braintree location. The Sheriff's Office will be screening the 1993 family movie, The Sandlot. The Sheriff's Office will also be partnering with the United Way to host a food drive that evening to benefit the Marge Crispin Center of Braintree and is encouraging attendees to bring a non-perishable food item to donate. Again, the film will be screened at the Sheriff's Office in Braintree at 2015 Washington Street and the program will begin at 6.30 p.m. Popcorn and light refreshments will be provided free of charge and there will be giveaways and a free raffle. Registration is free at tinyurl.com slash ncso movie night. The Braintree Recreation Department is offering a trip to see the comedy show Social Security on October 17th at the Newport Playhouse. The trip will cost $65 and includes the show, a buffet lunch, a cabaret performance, and the round-trip bus transportation. The bus will be equipped for disabled folks and may be available with a 10-day advance notice. For more information on tickets, you can contact the Recreation Department at 781-794-8901. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain the virus, so you can't get COVID from the shot. You may experience things like muscle aches, fever, or tiredness, but these are most likely signs that your body is building immunity to protect against the virus. Learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories from Massachusetts and the South Shore. Last Friday, acting Boston Mayor Kim Janey made the announcement that masks will be required for all indoor public spaces in Boston starting August 27th as the city moves to contain rising COVID-19 infections. Janey's office issued a statement saying the mandate will apply to everyone aged 2 and older who enters a business, retail shop, club, government office, or any other public venue. The mask mandate is being imposed ahead of the arrival of more than 50,000 college students from across the nation and a return to classes for more than 50,000 Boston public school students. Massachusetts remains one of the most vaccinated states in the nation, with more than 64% of residents fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Cases have been creeping up in recent weeks, causing mask mandates to be reinstated in many parts of the state. On Saturday, the New England Patriots plane headed to Haiti filled with supplies and major medical equipment. This was in response to Haiti's devastating earthquake that killed more than 2,000 people and left over 12,000 hospitalized with injuries. Chris Rogers, supply chain coordinator for Build Health International, said, quote, We're sending a bunch of construction equipment to help with damage to the buildings. Surgical beds, blood pressure cuffs, anything we can use to assist with the damage and help the Haitian people. End quote. The supplies were donated from the Beverly nonprofit Build Health International, who teamed up with the New England Patriots for use of their Boeing 767. The plane left Saturday morning at Logan and made a stop in Miami to pick up more supplies before taking off for Haiti. Roughly 40 pallets of emergency medical supplies and building materials were loaded onto the Patriots plane in addition to water and PPE donated by the Kraft family. A Holbrook man has been sentenced to three to four years in state prison after he was found guilty in the 2018 hit-and-run death of 21-year-old Lucas Flint of Braintree. Daryl Young Jr., 27, was found guilty of motor vehicle homicide and negligent driving following a trial in Norfolk Superior Court. Superior Court. A student at Emerson College and a regular walker, Flint, was found by the side of the road in the 1500 block of Washington Street shortly, after, shortly before 1 a.m. on December 15, 2018. He was taken to South Shore Hospital and later transferred to Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, where he died of his injuries. Police said a license plate and part of the front end of a car were found at the scene of the crash and traced back to Young. A box office attendant at the Laugh Boston Comedy Club, Flint was on his way home from work when he was struck. A small park on Washington Street near the incident was dedicated to his memory last year. 
Lucas Flint was a graduate of Braintree's Archbishop Williams High School. In the last year, more than 2,000 families lost loved ones to overdose in Massachusetts, a record-breaking number that shows the opioid epidemic is far from over. On Tuesday, August 31st, people worldwide will be remembered in a series of candlelight vigils, moments of silence, and other events to mark International Overdose Awareness Day. On the South Shore, there are a number of events that will take place on the 31st. In Braintree, a ceremony and butterfly release will take place at 10 a.m. at Braintree Town Hall. In Quincy, a candlelight vigil will be held at 7 p.m. at Hancock Adams Common. And in Holbrook, on Sunday, August 29th, there will be a candlelight vigil from 6 to 9 p.m. at Holbrook Town Hall. For more information, you can visit your town hall's website. The administration of the Dwyer Nursing Home at Faring Way in Weymouth Ken Strong has protested President Biden's decision to end Medicare and Medicaid funding for nursing homes whose staff are not fully vaccinated. On Wednesday, President Joe Biden announced that he is directing all nursing homes to require their staff to be vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to continue receiving Medicare and Medicaid funding. Strong feels as though nursing homes are being singled out because they receive federal funds. He mentions that nursing and rehabilitation centers are having a difficult time recruiting staff as it is. If employees refuse to be vaccinated and do not have a valid medical or religious exemption, they will be terminated per Governor Charlie Baker's requirements starting October 10th. Strong said instead of pulling away funding, quote, the president should require all citizens to be vaccinated to stop the virus, end quote. The 2021 South Shore Reader's Choice Contest launched the final voting round and the community will determine the top winner among the five finalists in more than 150 categories to compete for the South Shore's Reader's Choice title. Now through August 31st, members of the community can cast their vote for their favorite businesses among the five finalists who advanced from last month's nomination round on PatriotLedger.GannettContest.com. After voting ends, the three finalists will be invited to a special event on November 3rd, where the South Shore Reader's Choice will be announced. The Reader's Choice winners will also be revealed online and in a special insert publication on November 4th. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Braintree Today is brought to you with the support of Vitra Health in Braintree. Vitra Health is a home health care company with a goal of helping families stay together. They are dedicated to providing service and support backed by over 40 years of experience. To learn more, please visit www.vitrahealth.com. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now in entertainment, there are lots of new movies and TV shows to check out this week. That includes a documentary exploring the misinformation crisis during the COVID-19 pandemic, a horror movie that follows a newly widowed woman who begins to discover her deceased husband is who she thought he was, a new series featuring a young woman who's trying to escape a suffocating marriage, though she can't escape her own mind, which has been chipped by her husband, and a six-part Netflix series of a newly appointed female chair who faces the challenges of the job, being a mother and dealing with the relationship of her crush who is now her subordinate. First in entertainment, director Nan Fu Wang, who grew up in China, takes a fearless approach to, the, to document the COVID-19 pandemic in her documentary, In the Same Breath. Wang shows a daring exploration of how the Chinese government repressed information about what was really happening, while also exposing how other governments, most notable the U.S., contributed to the ongoing information crisis. Wang vividly fuses the political with the personal as she tells of her experience while also bringing her viewers back to the first stages of the pandemic, before the Wuhan shutdown, before the virus had officially been named. She pulls out cell phone videos, collects news reports, and finds some extremely eerie surveillance footage from inside a clinic in Wuhan. Yet Wang brings new insights to the crisis, and she manages to both surprise and alarm. You can find In the Same Breath on HBO and HBO Max. Next, for fans of jump scare horror, Rebecca Hall plays a newly widowed young woman in the night house. Beth has to endure the grief of her husband's unexpected suicide while having to unpack their newly built lake house by herself. As she unpacks boxes, she discovers some unusual possessions of her late husband, 
including some books that appear to be about the occult and dark arts. She slowly comes to the realization that her deceased husband may not have been who she thought he was. At the same time, Beth keeps having intensifying nightmares that lead her to another mirrored lake house across the lake. You can now watch The Night House in theaters. Then for new shows to watch, Made for Love stars Kristen Milioti as a young woman now on the run after ending a suffocating 10-year marriage with a tech billionaire. Hazel realizes that her husband Byron has implanted a revolutionary monitoring device in her brain that allows him to track her every move. Each episode bounces back and forth between Hazel's escape, her and Byron's unhappy marriage, and even back to her childhood with her father. The flashbacks are either comedic or used to illustrate Hazel's state of mind as she realizes that said mind is no longer entirely her own. You can watch season one of Made for Love on HBO Max. Season one of The Chair features Sandra Oh as Professor Ji Yoon Kim, who has just been appointed as the first female chair of the English department at Pembroke University. Kim sets to work and discovers juggling her new job, being a mother to her adopted daughter Juju, and negotiating the growing complexities of her relationship with her crush who is now her subordinate can be a lot to juggle. You can find The Chair on Netflix. And finally in entertainment, for those looking for live music performances, can visit the last free outdoor concert at Hingham Shipyard. The launch will hold its last concert on Friday at 7 p.m. in the amphitheater, am amphitheater, which is behind the old Hingham Beer Works. One of the South Shore's premier rock and roll bands, Gunpowder and Lead, will perform classic and contemporary rock on August 27th. The launch is located at 18 Shipyard Drive in Hingham, Mass. And for more information on performances, you can visit HinghamLaunch.com or check out their Facebook page at Hingham Shipyard. Thank you for watching Braintree today and thank you to our sponsor, Vitra Health. I'm Martha Constantinides and that's all we have for news this week. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.